I'm Manfred Kohl. I come from Nova Scotia, Canada. And I represent Overseas Council International, an organization that is helping theological schools around the world. And I had a chance uh, of visiting many theological schools in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, in Eurasia, in all the non-Western countries. And when I meet with the leadership of theological schools, when I meet with faculty, when I meet with students, quite often I see in their catalog that they focus on the early church as an example of how a church should be organized, how a church should run. I'd like to speak to you a little bit about the early church. And by the way, I'm originally from Germany, so I have an accent, which means you have to listen very carefully. So in the early church, there's a report in the book of Acts, a beautiful report that I like to focus my presentation, Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. There it says that the two leaders of the early church, Peter and John, went up to the temple to pray. My friend, I hope you realize that the key to success, the key to a great ministry, either teaching ministry or preaching ministry, whatever ministry involved in, the key is take time to talk to God and to listen to God. The two, Peter and John, went up to the temple to pray. It was their custom. They were taught by their master. They were students in the seminary of Jesus. And so the first thing they did, they went up to the temple to pray. Oh, I wish we would have more courses on prayer. I wish we would spend more time, personally, on prayer. And not just talking to God, but also listen to God. And listen to the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen to the Holy Spirit. So often we, we just speak and speak and speak and then we say Amen. And we thought prayer is over. We don't give God or the Lord Jesus or the Holy Spirit time to react and to speak to us. Please take a course, take some time on prayer. And as they went to the temple, they experienced something that I believe is quite significant. They came to a man who was lying there asking or begging for some help. Now that person is a very unique person. It says that he was paralyzed from the beginning. He was born paralyzed. He could not move. So he was lying there on, on the street every day, begging for the people who went up to the temple. My friend, the early church also means service. You see, someone had to bring that person in the morning and someone had to take the person home. And I'm sure that was not an easy assignment. He could not move. He could not go to the bathroom. He could not go and, and, and get something to eat. He depended on other people. We don't know the the names of the people who brought him in the morning and took him home the evening back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Faithful service. And did not Jesus speak about be faithful in the little things? Be faithful what you're doing. It's not a big action. It's a small little faithful things. If you're involved as a, as a doorkeeper, as a secretary, as a, as a cook, as a cleaner, as someone who arranged the tables and the chairs and the benches. 
be faithful in the little things. To invite someone to come to church, to bring them back and forth. My friend, we have to learn to be faithful in the small things. So Peter and John came along and they, they saw him and he saw them and immediately he, he thought, oh, I have to ask. These two people are important. They might have some, some money. <laughs> and so they, they, he asked for a donation. Now Peter and John were pastors of a, today we would call it a mega church, over 3,000 people. Big church. And they said, silver and gold we don't have. We don't have money. Money is not important for us. The ministry is important. Oh, I wish I would have more time to speak about that item. So often we focus on money, on wealth, on advantages. Be sure we get the right vacation. After so many years, we want to have a sabbatical. We want that and that and that. Well, everyone has a right to be treated fairly. But don't make that the topic. I have seen so many pastors. I have seen so many professors. I have seen so many executives who leave because they had a dispute about money, about benefits. And all you who are responsible of hiring a professor or a pastor or an executive, be fair. Deal with them what is correct. Go out of the limb and do a little bit more than what is required. Make people happy. And the little things might be most important. I remember I served for several years in Africa. And our two little boys, we have two boys, and they were probably four and seven. And on their birthday, they got a, a personal letter from the president of the mission. They were so happy, they ran around all over. I got a letter from the president. He knows that I have a birthday today. Small things. A letter of appreciation, not just to the professor, but also to his wife. Not just to one person, but to the spouse as well, and to the whole family. These two people said, we, have, we don't have money with us. But what we have, that's what we will give you. In the name of the living God, in the power of the risen Lord, get up. At the early church, they had great miracles. God allowed miracles to happen, but even today, we have so many miracles, we just have to open our eyes and to see them. God is using a doctor, using certain treatments. We almost had an accident, but my brakes were so good, now God helped you to stop the car in time. I almost got into difficulties. No, God helped you. He sent an angel to protect you. We don't see it, and we think everything else is of advantage. God is with you. God is helping you. In the power of the living God, get up. Now imagine a person who for so many years, for decades, always was lying down, always looking up, for the first time was able to stand. I'm sure no one of us can really imagine the joy and the excitement. He was jumping so high, I believe. He was so happy. He could not believe what happened. He was jumping and shouting and got excited. When God touches a person, if a person is touched either in his physical condition or his spiritual condition, whatever it is, it is joy. And all the angels in heaven will rejoice. So that man was jumping up. And Peter and John 
I'm sure they were just as excited and joyful praising the Lord. Now, after that man was healed, and by the way, the scripture tells us he was 40 years old. So 40 years, four decades, he was so excited. The first thing he did, the first thing he did, he went into the temple to give thanks to God. He did not go to, so to speak, to the newspaper to give a television interview, to tell all the world, look what happened to me. No, no. The first thing he went to the church, to the temple, to praise God. And I'm sure he broke every tradition. He walked into the temple and was shouting, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And other people came and said, Shh, you're in the temple. You're in the church. You have to behave. We don't do that. And I could see him pushing them right and left and shouting even louder. After 40 years, for the first time, he was a normal human being who could walk. What a joy. My friend, we have to learn to praise God more often. And to express it in such a way that even other people get excited. Now that man is a very unique person. He became the beginning of a great revolution. The entire church structure got upset. They did not know what in the world is happening here. All the people were listening to him. They were listening more than to the high priest and to all the preachers in the temple because he experienced God. He was a witness. My friend, are we a witness to the people around us? We have to learn from that early experience. Usually when we have a class or a lecture of the early church, we listen to their sermon of Peter and Stephen and others. We talk about the persecuted church and the difficulties. Here we read in that beautiful story in Acts chapter 3, there was a man who was healed and he became the first revolutionary in the church. He broke every rule. He began to praise the Lord. And I, be I believe that every movement begins with praising the Lord in seeing how great God is. We have to read the entire text. We have to read how that man went to the high priest, the high court, the, the whole administration of the church. He challenged them and said, my friend, I don't know what happened, but I can preach about the greatness of God. I did not go to a seminary. I did not go to a Bible school. I probably cannot even read or write. We don't know. But one thing I can tell you, God has touched me. And that I can tell in such a way that everyone gets excited about it. Are we a witness of the greatness of God? The early church experienced that over and over again. They had positive and negative reports in the early church. You remember, two people were not honest in the early church. And they dropped dead. Quite a judgment. So they are expression of greatness of God that built the early church. And I believe if people today begin to praise God more often in places that are allowed or not allowed, when people begin to put God first, something is happening. And the early church is the best example. May God bless you.